Hey everyone. Um, this week is 10.8. We are going to talk about how to solve some trig equations. So, um, so far we've been using our unit circle for all types of things. So the first couple weeks with unit circle, we were, we were just evaluating, um, um, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent values for any given trig or, uh, for any given radian. So now we're going to kind of work backwards. We're going to figure out, um, if we're given a value, what radian is that value true for? Um, so, you know, we're going to need our unit circles handy this week. So I grabbed my unit circle. Um, if you have your unit circle, make sure you got your unit circle handy, especially, you know, we're going to need our chart because that's our friend. Um, and um, if you don't have one printed, just have it pulled up, um, whether it's this one or the other one I have posted on Google Classroom. You have to scroll a little bit. Probably it's 10.3. Uh, but make sure you have a unit circle because you'll need it. Um, so to solve trig equations, um, we get a trig function by itself and then solve for the radian values that satisfy the equation. So we're going to use our unit circle to help us find the values. Um, and so the trick is, is to solve these, you literally just get the, the trig function by itself. So get the trig function. Get trig function by itself. So that's the first thing we're going to do is get the trig function by itself. And then we're going to think about what radian angle theta makes that true. So for this first example, so here's cosine. We're going to get cosine by itself. So to do that, we're going to divide both sides by negative 6. So we have negative 3 6 equals cosine theta. Negative 3 6 reduces to negative 1 half equals cosine theta. And so we're going to just concentrate on radian values between 0 um, and 2 pi. So we're going to concentrate on radians between 0 and 2 pi. Radians um, 0 to 2 pi. So, and that just means around the unit circle. So just looking at the unit circle, when does cosine equal negative 1 half? Well, my trick is um, go to your table and just when is cosine 1 half? Um, pi over 3 values. Um, so then all we have to do is figure out when is cosine negative. What pi over 3 values is cosine negative 1 half? You can even just go around your circle and find the pi over 3's positive, negative. Okay, so cosine, oh, you guys can see. <laughs> cosine is negative 1 half. Remember, cosine is the x value. Sine is the y. So when is your x value negative 1 half? Well, I know it's going to be at pi over 3's. And we need negative 1 half, so pi over 3 is positive 1 half now. 2 pi over 3, negative 1 half. Great, so that's one of them. 2 pi over 3. So one of them, theta equals 2 pi over 3. Let's see if there's any more. There should be. There's always 2, right? Because there's two quadrants where things are positive and two where they're negative. Um, and then 4 pi over 3. 4 pi over 3 has negative 1 half. Sweet. So... This satisfies what, what radian gives you a cosine value of negative 1 half, 2 pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3. And then if you check the next pi over 3 radian, 5 pi over 3 has positive 1 half, so it's not that one. All right, so um, that's what we're doing this week. We're getting the trig function by itself and then asking ourselves when does cosine equal, when is your cosine value negative 1 half? Go to your unit circle, check it out. All right, next up. Um, here's tangent. We need to get tangent by itself, so I'm going to divide by 9. So negative 3 root 3 over 9. Okay, well, the negative 3 and the 9 reduce. So if you divide top and bottom, oh, okay, it equals tangent theta. So the negative 3 and the 9 reduce. So this is negative 1 root 3 over 3, because negative 3 ninths is the same thing as negative 1 third. Um, and you don't really need the 1. So really, it's just negative root 3 over 3 equals tangent theta. So now you just go to your table. When is tangent root 3 over 3? Tangent is root 3 over 3, oh, at pi over 6 values. So tangent is root 3 over 3 at pi over 6 values. But we need to think about when would tangent be negative. So we need the, when would tangent be negative? Tangent is negative. Well, remember, tangent is sine divided by cosine, so positive divided by positive is positive. All right, so quadrant one's positive. Quadrant two, when is tangent negative here? Well, you would do a positive divided by a negative, so yes. So tangent is negative in quadrant two. 
Let's check the next couple. In quadrant three, sine divided by cosine and negative divided by a negative makes a positive, so not quadrant three. Negative divided by a positive. Oh, that's going to be negative. So tangent is negative in quadrant two and quadrant four. So we need the pi over 6 values, because that's when tangent is root 3 over 3. We need the pi over 6 values from quadrant 2 and 4. All right, well, in quadrant 2, we get 5 pi over 6. So theta equals 5 pi over 6. And quadrant 4, it's 11 pi over 6. Sweet. Um... So tangent's the trickiest one because you can't just look at the circle to find the value, right? You actually have to think about, okay, I know that it's root 3 over 3 of pi over 6 is, so when is tangent negative? Uh, quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. So pull the pi over 6 values out of 2 and 4. All right, the next one. 8 sine theta equals negative 4 root 2. Well, I'll divide both sides by 8. So sine theta equals negative 4 divided by 8 is negative 1 half, so it's negative root 2 over 2. All right, so we need to ask ourselves when is sine root 2 over 2? Well, go to your table. When is sine root 2 over 2 at pi over 4 values? And then we want the negative ones, right? So when is sine negative? Well, sine is negative. And then well, these are labeled on here too. Sine is negative in quadrant 3 and in quadrant 4. So we want the pi over 4 values from these two quadrants. So 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. So theta equals 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Sweet. Last one. 4 plus cosine theta equals 4. Well, to get cosine by itself, we have 4 added out front. So we're going to subtract 4 from both sides. So cosine theta equals 4 minus 4 is 0. So when is cosine 0? Go to your table. Cosine is 0 at pi over 2 values. So cosine is 0 in a couple spots. Cosine is 0 at pi over 2. And cosine is 0 at 3 pi over 2. So theta is pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Don't forget the 3 pi over 2 one. All right, so these are the level two examples. These are just one step solving ones. Um, there's a little, you know, sometimes you have to reduce the fraction, but the trick is you guys, it should always reduce down to something that's on your table. Um, there's always, it should always reduce down to something that you guys can glance here, find the radian um, and go find it on your unit circle specifically. So if it's not reducing down to something um, on your table, make like check your work, make sure it's reducing properly. Level three examples just have some more steps. And specifically, there are sines or cosines or whatever on both sides. So the first thing you have to do, first thing, get all trig functions on one side. Trig functions on one side. They act like variables. They act like variables. It's like having x's or something. Um, so there's a negative sign and negative 9 sign. Um, I'll probably just add one sign to both sides. This cancels plus one sign. So this side, this cancels. So there's a 4. Negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8 sign. And their last step to get sign by itself is to divide both sides by negative 8. So... Um, Negative four eighths is the same thing as negative one half equals sine theta. And so, you know, now we're back to that case. When does sine equal negative one half? Over here, sine is one half at pi over six values. And so when is sine negative? Quadrant three and four. So pi over six values in three and four are seven pi over six and 11 pi over six. So theta equals seven pi over six, 11 pi over six. Sweet. All right, next up. So um, it looks scary because there's a square root here, but you know, a lot of our um, a lot of our table values have roots, so don't be worried about roots. It'll reduce down to something that you guys can see. 
Um, the first thing, though, is get all the trig functions on one side. There's negative 6 cosine here and negative 2 cosine here. Um, I'm just going to add 2 cosine. You could move either one. I'm going to add 2 cosine. So negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4 cosine theta equals these cancel. So we just have 2 root 2 left. Last step to get cosine by itself, divide both sides by negative 4. So we get cosine equals negative 2 fourths is negative 1 half. So it's negative root 2 over 2. So when is cosine root 2 over 2? Go to your table. Cosine is root 2 over 2 at pi over 4 values. But we want negative ones. So when is cosine negative? Cosine is negative in quadrant 2 and in quadrant 3. So we're just going to plot the pi over 4 values from quadrants 2 and 3. So 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. So theta equals 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. All right. A tangent one. Um, doesn't matter which one you move. Um, I'll add three tangent. This cancels plus three tangent. So we have four equals five. Negative two plus three is one. So plus I'm just going to write tangent theta. Subtract five from both sides. This cancels five minus four. Negative one equals tangent. So when is tangent one? Well, I'll go to here. Tangent is 1 pi over 4. Um, but specifically, we want to know when tangent is negative 1. I remember I made a note up here. Tangent is negative in quadrants 2 and 4. So we need the pi over 4 values from quadrants 2 and 4. So 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. So theta equals 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. All right, and our last example... We've got 3 cosine theta, negative cosine. You can move the negative one over. I don't like ending up with 0, so I'm just going to subtract 3 cosine theta minus 3 cosine theta. So what's left is 2 root 3 equals negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4 cosine theta. Last step to get cosine by itself. Divide both sides by negative 4. 2 fourths is 1 half, so we have negative root 3 over 2 equals cosine theta. So when does cosine equal negative root 3 over 2? Go to your table. Cosine root 3 over 2 at pi over 6 is. Um, specifically, though, we want negatives, and cosine is negative in quadrants 2 and 3. So the pi over 6 is from 2 and 3 are 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. So theta equals 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. And that's it. That's all we're doing this week. So, um... All we're doing this week is solving the trig function by itself. So we're getting the trig function alone and seeing what it's equal to. And what it's equal to should always be something on your unit circle chart. And so what you're going to do is, you know, find the radian that matches. So like when is sine root 3 over 2? Pi over 3 values. And then you just have to ask yourself, do I have positive root 3 over 2 or negative root 3 over 2? And that'll narrow it down to two radians um, because sine is positive in two quadrants and negative in two. Same thing with cosine and with tangent. So just make sure you're checking the negatives um, and finding the correct spots. You can also, like, instead of if you don't want to use the chart, you can just go around your circle, right? If sine is negative one half, that's the y value. When do you have a y value that's negative one half? So you can travel around. Um, haven't found any yet. Ah, there's one. There's a y value of negative 1 half, so 7 pi over 6. Keep going. And there's another one, 11 pi over 6. So, um, but that doesn't work for tangent, so you have to use a table for tangent um, and think about where tangent is positive and negative. So this week, again, is just using your unit circle. Remember, your unit circle is a tool, and it's a helpful tool. Um, so this is just another application of when would a unit circle come in handy? If I'm trying to solve a trig function um, and find when a radian, what radian values gives you certain values. Um, so hopefully this goes well this week. Let me know if you guys have any questions.